Hello and welcome gamers. I'm Nate and you're watching Nate's Got Game. All right. So what is this channel all about? You might be wondering. Well, on this channel, you're going to find anything from angry gameplay to live commentary to game reviews and much more. So I'm going to kick off this channel with my top eight favorite video games. First off, we have World of Warcraft, more commonly known as WoW. Now, World of Warcraft is an MMORPG, and that stands for Massively Multiplayer Online Role-Playing Game. That's fucked up. And this game is made for PCs and Macs, so it's not really a video game or a console game, it's more of like a computer game, but whatever, it's still up there. So a kind of crazy fact, World of Warcraft has over 10 million players right now, and it also has over 9,500 quests. It's over 9,000! What 9,000?! So, holy shit, I don't think you're ever going to be bored with that game. So, World of Warcraft, I've played this game since I was about 16 years old, so that's a lot of years. And the crazy thing is, I haven't even gotten bored of it yet. I think that says a lot about the game's play value. I mean, if I haven't gotten bored of it in five years, it must be a good game. But despite the game's appeal, I pretty much had to force myself to stop playing World of Warcraft because it was essentially consuming my life in like all of my productivity. So if you have a strong will to do other things, World of Warcraft is probably a great game for you. But myself, I could just sit and play it for hours all day. Also, if you have no friends, World of Warcraft is great for you. I'm just kidding. Anyways, the things that I like about World of Warcraft is it's like a pretty fun adventure game. Like there's the aspects of exploring and like obviously magic. Or if you want to be some like nasty brute guy, you can do that too. So it's just like a very versatile game. Also, the graphics in the game, a lot of people would say they're childish, like cartoony. But I actually like them. I mean, I don't know why, it's just, it's fun. Another thing that I like about World of Warcraft is a huge social network that comes with it. If you are actually playing that game like a ton, like I was, you're gonna meet a lot of people. And that kind of just draws you into the game more because you're like, oh, I have to go play with my friends. Okay, on to the next game. Okay, so now we have Pokemon Ruby. This game is a classic turn-based RPG. This game was originally made for the Game Boy Advance, but I usually played it on my Game Boy SP because I was that much of a badass. Something interesting about Pokemon Ruby and its counterpart game, Pokemon Sapphire, is that they were the first games in the Pokemon series to have secret bases, which was one of my favorite things about Pokemon. For some reason, it seems like that game had the most things to do out of all the other games I've played. I don't know why, it probably doesn't, but I just remember like rolling around every town in my fucking trick bike, doing extreme wheelies all through the town. For those of you who don't know what Pokemon is, what the fuck is wrong with you? Usually you're like this fucking sad kid that has just recently moved to a new town and he doesn't know what the fuck's going on. That's not anything to do with Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Events lead up to you becoming a Pokemon trainer. After you obtain your first Pokemon, which are little fucking monsters, I don't know, that have special abilities all the time that are way cooler than you. Yeah, Pokemon are just basically fucking animal monsters that obey you and can understand you and sometimes speak English. But usually they just say their own name. Pico Pico. Caterpie. Caterpie. Yeah. So anyways, you get these Pokemon, and you are on a quest to make them strong enough to vanquish evil in the land. To level up, you go through fucking caves and grass, and you just fight the fuck out of every Pokemon you see. That's a little bit about what Pokemon is. Now why this game is my favorite, I think it's because I just have so many memories playing it. Like, I remember one time in middle school, I snuck out of class to go trade a deoxy egg in the boys' bathroom with my best friend. God, we're such fucking nerds. Any other person in middle school is like, Yo, let's sneak out of class and go touch some girls' titties and smoke meth. But no, I had to trade deoxy eggs in the bathroom. So the reason I like Pokemon is it's a very, very original game. I don't think any other game really has come close to it. Pokemon. 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 Up next we have DDRX for the PS2! I'm not really sure what style of game this is, but I like to label it as coordination slash reflex. But what's completely different about this game is that you actually play it with your feet 
instead of your hands. So basically in DDR, you're trying to hit the arrows that correspond with the arrows on the screen. And you might be thinking, wow that sounds really fucking stupid. But when it's to a techno beat, it's awesome! What I like about the DDR games is the mixture between simplicity and challenge. I mean, yeah, there's only four buttons for you to step on, but things get so crazy and so fast. Now you may be wondering, no, you're probably not, why I picked X instead of all of the other fucking DDRs there are. And I have to say it's my favorite, I think, just because I spent the most time playing it and I have the most memories playing it. I remember every day before school, in 11th grade, I had to play DDRX. Specifically the song Doob I Doob, even though it sounds more like Doopy Doo. And that song would get me pumped for like the fucking rest of the day. Another game that is in the style of coordination slash reflex that is also made for the PS2 is Amplitude. This game is very similar to DDR in the fact that you have scrolling targets that you're trying to hit in the proper sequence. Again, this game may seem very simple, but there is a certain level of satisfaction that comes with completing a level when you're on like an extreme difficulty. One thing that I liked a lot about Amplitude was being able to customize your avatar, which they called Freaks. It was just a nice bonus to the game after you completed a crazy level, you always unlocked like crazy devil horns or some shit to put on your avatar. Okay, switching gears on the consoles. Right now we have Xbox. The next game that I want to talk about is Fable 1. This game is an RPG and you cannot play it on any other consoles. So I'm going to be forced to go and buy an Xbox just so that I can play Fable. But it is so fucking worth it. And let me tell you why. Basically I started playing Fable at a young age so it was very impressionable on me. Seeing as immediately afterwards I went outside and made a sword out of a land marker and started beating the fuck out of trees. One of the major things that I like about this game that you find in some other video games is that you have a good slash evil meter and like the more good that you get, the more good you look and the more evil you get, the more evil you look. Remember my guy always had like the nastiest fucking horns cause I just love killing villagers. Basically the point in this game is you are a hero, either male or female, and uh, your mission is to save Albion, which is the land that you reside in. Through your journeys in Albion, you'll run into crazy monsters such as Trogs, which are kind of like fat trolls, who like to steal little children. So you fight those Trog motherfuckers, as well as these things called Balverines, which are kind of like werewolf motherfuckers. Let me tell you, they get nasty. And you even enter this like arena thing, which up until that point, you're kind of just like an unknown adventurer. After you win the arena, you become kind of like a well-known hero. But yeah, I don't want to give away too much of the storyline, so I will end that just saying that this game fucking rocks. Alright, next up we have fighting games. Soul Calibur 4 is the first game that I'm going to talk about. I played Soul Calibur 4 mostly on Xbox, however it was also made for PS3, which... Everybody knows PS3 is just fucking way better. Soul Calibur 4 is your classic arcade fighting game. There's not a whole lot to it except for just kicking the shit out of your opponent and feeling great about it. The thing that I liked about Soul Calibur 4 is that you had an awesome character customization option. I think that was one of my favorite things to do was actually design a character that was just really badass and go and kick the shit out of everyone. Aside from that, the graphics are awesome and the fighting styles are very smooth and beautiful. So the next fighting game that I wanted to talk about is Killer Instinct. This is quite an older game and I think I first played it when I was like 10 years old. This again is your classic arcade fighting game. The graphics in it aren't that great, but holy shit, the fighting is so fast. I think that's one of the deciding factors on why I like this game so much is it's just so fast paced and the combos that you can link together are crazy. I want to show you a little example of the combos that you can put together. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. Other than that, there's not too much more to this game. I mean, there's kind of a storyline, but not really. The character options are pretty cool in that game. Everyone's not just a human. There's this motherfucker called Cinder, and he's on fire. 
You can also play as a raptor or a skeleton or a werewolf. So yeah, those are some of the reasons that Killer Instinct is one of my top favorite games. And finally, last but not least, my number one favorite game of all time is The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. I could talk about this game for hours because it's just so fucking great. The Wind Waker is like quite a bit different from all of the other Zelda games, whereas it's based at sea instead of on land, so obviously you have a boat to travel around instead of a horse. This is the classic storyline of Zelda. Everything starts out great, and life is good, and some fucking disaster happens, and Link has to go and save the world. Usually this ends up with you saving Princess Zelda. Wait, it always ends up with that. Who is always kidnapped by this motherfucker villain. Aside from storyline, the reasons why I like this game so much is the graphics are very kiddish. There's actually cell shaded. Wind Waker was one of the first games to have a chibi looking Link. Things that are different about Wind Waker is that instead of an ocarina, you have what's called the Wind Waker, which is kind of like a conductor's little wand thing. I don't know what those things are. Also in this game, when you get the Master Sword, it's not at full power, so you have to go recharge the sword's power because apparently it's like fucking dead. As well as reconstruct the Triforce, which somehow has been shattered for the protection of humanity. So I guess that's one of the interesting things about Wind Waker is that Link doesn't start out with the Triforce, he actually obtains it. Those are some of the very few reasons why Zelda Wind Waker is my top favorite game. If you haven't played any of these games yet, I highly recommend you do! So there you have my favorite video games. What I want you to do is leave in the comments below your favorite video games. Remember to subscribe and hit the like button. This has been Nate Scott Game. <laughs>